Good day, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to my channel. A month after I was diagnosed, my appointment schedule was completely inundated with specialist appointments to figure out the next step, as well as further testing appointments to figure out if the cancer had spread from my breast to the rest of my body. What I quickly realized is that there's an overwhelming amount of information being exchanged at every single appointment. You are newly diagnosed or in the middle of your fight and want to tackle your specialist appointments feeling in control and confident? Watch on for my four tips on how to avoid the appointment overwhelm. Without a plan in place to handle these high stress interactions, it was easy for me to leave a 30 minute appointment without having any recollection of what just happened, what's next, and having a grasp on the information that was just exchanged. This show up and wait and see what happens, fly by the seat of my pants approach was not going to work for me moving forward. Knowledge and understanding is power. I want you to go into every appointment prepared to get all the information that you require to tackle this diagnosis and to make competent decisions for your health. Okay, let's get right into it today. So how to make the most of your appointments and avoid the overwhelm. Action step one gain a general understanding. Walking into an appointment without a vague idea of what it's going to be about can be extremely overwhelming. What I found helpful was to conduct a little bit of research prior to the appointment to help gain a foundational understanding of the treatment or procedure being discussed. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did not like to conduct a lot of research as it's very easy to get caught down a rabbit hole of darkness. However, I did find it was helpful to do some as it gave me a general understanding of what I would be talking about with the specialist and that allowed me to get over or work through some of that overwhelm while I was at home so that I was better prepared in the specialist appointment. This provided a foundation for me to tackle the appointment with a little more confidence, awareness, and understanding. As an added bonus, doing a little background research prompted me to create some questions to bring to the appointment that I could ask the specialist right away and get them off my chest. Action step number two, make a list of questions. Have you ever thought of a question and then immediately thought, oh, I'll remember to make a note of that later, or I'll for sure remember that in the appointment. There have been countless times where I've thought of an important question and in my mind, I'm thinking it's so important. I'm going to remember to ask this. Then I get to the appointment and I'm thinking, what was that question? Do not fall into the trap of I will remember this or I'll remember to make a note later. So here's my tip. Make a list and make it now. The other thing that was happening to me was after I got out of the appointment, I would think of a million questions and I would want to turn around and go back into that appointment, but obviously I couldn't. So here's my tip, make a list and make it now. I recommend making a list on something that you have on or with you all the time. So for me, that was my phone. I pulled up the files or notes sections and whenever I thought of a question, I put it on there right away. So another thing I found really helpful was to have a couple question lists going and I would have them broken into the specific specialist that I was seeing. So for example, I would have a list entitled chemotherapy and I would have my questions for my oncologist on that list. 
I also had a question list for surgery and I would have the questions for my surgeons on that list. That helped me make sure that the lists were very streamlined for the appointments so that I wouldn't miss anything. So you have your list, you are at your appointment. When you're in the waiting room, I recommend getting that list out. So if it's a notepad in your purse, get it out and put it right beside you. If it's on your phone, get your phone out and put it right beside you. Just having that visual to remind yourself that you do have questions is so important. So typically at the end of the appointments, I found that the specialist would ask me if I had any questions. At this time, I would pull up my list and take a minute to look over what I had written down. It's so important to get your questions out there. So if there is something that hasn't been discussed yet, ask. I know sometimes specialists are busy, but with that being said, this is your treatment. This is your health. So if you have some unanswered questions, do not be afraid to speak up and ask them. You need to know what is going on. I had a really good relationship with my oncologist and I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but towards the end of my treatment, I noticed that my check-in appointments were pushed to the last one of the day. I don't know if she did that so that I wouldn't run her late with all my questions, but in either case, it was really appreciated because I didn't feel that pressure um, that I was holding her up from someone. If you are connecting with my experience, if you are feeling less alone and more supported, hit the thumbs up below and let me know that you're here with me. Thank you so much for doing that. It means a lot to me to be part of an empowering, supportive community. So with that done, let's move on. Action step three, take notes. How many times have you left an appointment to meet your spouse in the car only to have them say, so what did you learn? Blank. In these moments of stress and overwhelm, I find that it's so easy for the information to go in one ear and right out the other, even when I'm trying my best to be fully engaged and present. If it is an option to you, I would recommend bringing a support person with you so that they can act as your scribe. You may think this is overkill, but believe me, it is not. I found this extremely helpful. Then I could concentrate on what the specialist was saying and start to formulate questions as well as manage or try to manage my overwhelm that was happening in the appointment. However, in times when I was not able to bring someone with me, I would get out my trusty questions list and make notes on the bottom of that for myself so that when I left the appointment, I would have an idea of what happened. Another option that I use for those big appointments that would need to result in making a decision was to ask the practitioner if we could record the session. That way we could use the playback method to have all the information at a later time when my brain was not as full and overwhelmed. And one of the last options I used as a method to record the information was to ask if it was okay if I made a call to my husband and left the phone open so that he could hear and make notes on the other end while I was in the appointment. Action step number four, create a treatment portfolio. Over the course of your treatment, you are going to have a constant flow of information coming in. And what I recommend is finding a place to compile that information so that you always know where it is. So in the case of your appointment, you would now have questions and answers, as well as you might have been provided a pamphlet or some medication information all of these things can be printed, compiled, and put in this portfolio or binder so that you can later review it when your mind is feeling fresh 
and more at ease. I would usually wait about a day or two to go over the new information as it would take me that long to recover from the appointment. But when I did, I would start to look at the new information and it would serve as the basis or the groundwork to go back to tip one and start my research and question formulating for the next round of visits. So for example, if I was at my first appointment with my oncologist and I learned the two different chemotherapy drugs I was going to be doing in my treatment, I would then take this information and do a little preliminary research as to the side effects and start to create a list so that when I got to see her next, I would be prepared to ask those questions. Here we are at the end of the list of my four tips to decrease overwhelm and make the most of your appointments. So let's do a recap. Come prepared with an idea of what you will be talking or learning about at the appointment. Prior to the appointment, make a tangible list of questions, make sure to bring them with you and ask them. Take notes, bring a scribe or ask the practitioner if you can audio record the new information. Print out your notes and compile it with the handouts or pamphlets that you are given and put them into a binder or portfolio so that you can easily find it to review and learn from later. With these tips, I hope that you can go into your appointments feeling more confident, comfortable, and in control. The breast cancer community is one of strength and unity, and I would love to hear from you. What did you find helpful to fight the overwhelm and make the most of your appointments? I would be honored if you would put your experience in the comment section below. The more information we can share with one another, the more we can help each other through this. I welcome you to subscribe to this channel as I will be sharing more tips and insights to support you through your fight. I wish you the most wonderful day. Take care.